Welcome to the video edition of Zions Bank Economic Update. I'm Deb Speed, and joining me is Robert Spenlov, Economic and Public Policy Officer for Zions Bank, to talk about the Fed's most recent monetary policy decision. So, Robert, what did happen at that meeting on March 16th? So the Fed, in uh, announcing their rate decision, decided to hold short-term interest rates steady. Uh, in December of 2015, they raised them by about 25 basis points. Up, so now we're in a range of between 25 and 50 basis points. And they decided that they would just keep them there. So we're, we're in a period of uh, constant interest rates. They also made a decision to lower the forecast of where interest rates would be going in the future. So in the past, uh, in December, they were forecasting long term uh, that the rates would top out around 3.5%. Now they're saying that they're going to top out right around three and a quarter percent. So not only did they hold the, the federal funds rate constant, but drop down the forecast a little bit. So why didn't they decide to raise rates again like they did in December? Well, one of the things that the Fed is really struggling with is there's kind of a divergence of, of pathways going on. So you've got a domestic economy and an international economy. And the domestic co economy is really strong. We've got strong employment growth. We've got very low unemployment. We're starting to see wage growth and we're starting to see inflation closer to the range that the Fed wants to see. However, at the same time, internationally, there's a lot of weakness going on. And the Fed is worried that the international weakness is actually going to come in and start to weaken our domestic economy. In fact, the, the international weakness is so pronounced that there are uh, a couple, actually, uh, central banks across the world that have started to drop their short-term uh, interest rates into negative territory. Now, negative interest rates are really interesting. They seem counterintuitive to me. Can you explain what a negative interest rate is and is that something that we would ever see the Fed do? It's really interesting. It's something that hasn't been done very much. Uh, essentially, the essence of a negative interest rate is that, uh, so th what the Fed can do with interest rates is it's a way to influence people's decisions. If interest rates are higher, it encourages people to save more. If interest rates are lower, it discourages savings and encourages either spending or investing. So when a central bank runs out of tools, when they've dropped their rate all the way to zero, they can drop it negative. And essentially, when you have a negative interest rate, someone would have to pay a bank for storing their money. Rather than earning money, you have to pay the bank to do that. Now, the effect of that, the goal of that, is the ultimate way to discourage people from saving. And that's what uh, the European Central Bank and the Japanese Central Bank have done. In fact, just recently, the European Central Bank dropped their negative interest rate even lower to even more strongly encourage people to spend and to invest. Now, the question of whether the Fed will do it is a really interesting one. We don't know yet. The Fed has never never done it. Uh, and one of the reasons why the Fed has been trying to increase interest rates is so they have that tool in a recession to start dropping those rates back down. But if they're not able to raise those rates in the next few months and years, and we do get a recession, then that's something they may have to look into is going into that negative territory. How will the Fed's decision to hold rates steady right now affect the market? Yeah, we've actually already seen the impact on the market. Uh, immediately after the Fed uh, decision, we saw uh, equity markets going up. We saw uh, the uh, essentially the uh, oil market started to go up. So we're starting to see that impact of the Fed encouraging people to put more money into the bar market and invest more money. We also saw volatility dropping in the, uh, in the stock market. So we've got a more active Fed, a Fed less willing to allow the market to fluctuate. And so we see an increase in market, in market prices and a decrease in volatility. What can we expect from the Fed for the coming year? So what the Fed signaled is that they're gonna be very careful, they're gonna be very uh, moderate, and they're gonna be very uh, uh, circumspect in the way that they go about uh, increasing interest rates. So originally in 2015, they were saying that they were going to raise interest rates by a, a four different times. They've now said it will not be four times, it'll be two times. And, and it will also be dependent on what the circumstances look like. So that's a real good signal to the market. It's a real good signal to people in the economy saying, we understand, we're going to be careful, and we're going to be uh, watching the environment to make sure that we don't get ahead of ourselves and don't push the economy into recession. Great. 
As always, thank you so much for your insights. Sure. Thank you for joining us for this economic update. For more economic data and analysis, please visit zionsbank.com economy.